Do you know the impact of overconsuming alcohol on your liver? Let's delve into a condition known as alcoholic liver disease and the potential consequences of not curbing your alcohol intake. Essentially, there are three types of lesions associated with this disease, fatty liver, alcoholic hepatitis, and cirrhosis. Fatty liver, a condition that affects all alcoholics, is always reversible if alcohol consumption is ceased. It's characterized by the buildup of excess fat in liver cells. Alcoholic hepatitis, affecting about 35% of alcoholics, is usually reversible if alcohol is stopped. Here, inflammation and damage occur to the liver. Lastly, there's cirrhosis, a condition that affects 10 to 15% of alcoholics. This is a potentially irreversible state where the liver tissue is replaced by scar tissue, severely hampering its function. Now, the pathophysiology behind these lesions is complex and still not completely understood. One of the primary mechanisms involves the oxidation of ethanol to acetaldehyde. This process reduces NAD plus to NADH, and the increased NADH decreases ATP supply to the liver, impairing lipolysis. This means fatty acids and triglycerides accumulate in the liver, leading to fatty liver. Acetaldehyde also binds to hepatocytes, the main cell type in the liver, evoking an immune reaction. Additionally, the consumption of alcohol increases gut permeability, leading to increased bacterial translocation. Alcohol metabolism contributes to a relative hypoxia in liver zone 3, more so than zone 1, leading to necrosis and hepatic vein sclerosis. In the histology of alcoholic hepatitis, we see ballooned or swollen hepatocytes often containing mallory bodies, characteristically surrounded by neutrophils. Large fat globules and fibrosis are also common features. Understanding the types of lesions caused by alcohol overconsumption and their pathophysiology is the first step towards grasping the severity of this issue. How much alcohol is too much, and what are the signs of liver damage? These are questions that often arise when discussing alcohol consumption and its impact on health, specifically, liver health. When we talk about alcoholic liver disease, the clinical features can vary, but it's essential to understand the key thresholds. For instance, consuming more than two to three standard drinks per day for females and three to six for men over a span of 10 years can lead to cirrhosis. However, it's important to note that this occurs only in about 10 to 20% of individuals who consistently consume alcohol above these thresholds. But what exactly is a standard drink? A standard drink is equivalent to 14 grams of pure alcohol, which can be found in 12 ounces of beer with 5% alcohol content. 5 ounces of wine with 12 to 17% alcohol, 3 ounces of fortified wine with 17 to 22% alcohol, or 1.5 ounces of liquor with 40% alcohol. Remember, the percentage of alcohol multiplied by the volume in ounces roughly equals 60. Now let's talk about alcoholic hepatitis, a condition that can range in severity from mild to fatal liver failure. In mild cases, an individual might stop drinking because they feel unwell, and then resume once they're feeling better. Severe cases, on the other hand, can present with symptoms like low-grade fever, discomfort in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen, and an increased white blood cell count, often mimicking conditions like right lower lobe pneumonia and cholecystitis. Recognizing the signs and understanding the thresholds of alcohol consumption can help prevent severe liver damage. It's important to be aware of these clinical features and to consider the amount of alcohol in the drinks you consume. Remember, moderation is key and staying within the limits of standard drinks can go a long way in maintaining your liver health. How is alcoholic liver disease diagnosed, treated, and what is the prognosis? You may wonder. Let's break it down. To diagnose alcoholic liver disease, a biopsy and histology are often used hepatocyte necrosis surrounded by inflammation, mallory bodies, which are intracellular eosinophilic aggregates of cytokeratins, and a network of intralobular connective tissue surrounding cells and venules, often referred to as chicken wire fibrosis, are the triad of findings that typically indicate alcoholic hepatitis. Blood tests can also provide clues, with an AST to ALT ratio greater than 2 to 1, increased GDT, and changes in the complete blood count often observed. Once diagnosed, the cornerstone of treatment is alcohol cessation. 
This could involve support groups like Alcoholics Anonymous or medications such as disulfiram, naltrexone, or acamprosate. Alongside this, multivitamin supplements, especially those rich in thiamine, are recommended. It's also crucial to be cautious with drugs metabolized by the liver. In cases with elevated bilirubin and INR, or if encephalopathy is present, prednisone may be administered. However, it's contraindicated in cases of gastrointestinal bleeding, renal failure, or infection. Now, on to prognosis. With fatty liver, complete resolution can be achieved with cessation of alcohol intake. However, with alcoholic hepatitis, the picture is grimmer. If severe, immediate mortality rates range from 30 to 60% in the first six months. With continued alcohol intake, the five-year mortality rate is a staggering 70%. But with alcohol cessation, this figure drops to 30%. The best treatment is prevention, but there are options available for those who are already suffering. Remember, it's never too late to make healthier choices. So, take a step towards a healthier life today. Reduce your alcohol consumption and take care of your liver. It's the only one you've got.